from Gurvinda Singh. Um, welcome, my brother. Uh, my friend, he says, why Mughal kings killed two Sikh gurus and millions of Sikhs? Um, this is a very common uh, question that is asked. Um, and see, as, as, a, as a human being, as a Muslim, any innocent person who is being oppressed, killed or attacked or imprisoned, as a Muslim, we stand in justice for that. Because this is the command Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, in Surah Nisa, that stand firm on justice, even if it is against yourself or your own people. So if somebody has oppressed somebody, um, for example, today we have many Muslim governments, many Muslim rulers, they are oppressive. So if they oppress a Muslim, a Hindu, a Sikh or a Jew, that is wrong. So if a Mughal ruler who had oppressed a Muslim, they oppressed Muslims, they oppressed Hindus, they may have oppressed Sikh community members, they may have oppressed Christians. Anyone who oppresses the British Empire, who was a Christian empire, they oppressed Muslims and Hindus. The Hindu empire, they oppressed the Muslims and the Christians of that time. The Buddhist empire, they oppressed the Hindus and the Christians and the Sikh of that time. So different empires, when a ruler is there, as I said, this is a political issue rather than a religious issue. Now, why did the um, gurus were killed or why were they attacked? I'll give you a quick uh, uh, brief down of that. Um, from the time of the first Guru, Guru Nanak Ji, he, he did not have anything what you call um, a conflict with Babar. Although Babar was the ruler of India at that time and somebody forming an opposition or a rebellion would bring the wrath of the government of the empire of that time. As I said, the Mughal empire, you need to look at it as a, a, an empire, as a government of India rather than as a Muslim, Christian, Hindu or a Sikh government. Moving further down, at the time of the fifth Guru, Guru Arjan, that is when the conflict happened um, between the, uh, the Indian king, the Mughal king Jahangir against um, the, the fifth guru of, uh, uh, of the Sikh religion, Guru Arjan, and he was um, e executed by uh, the King Jahangir, the Mughal Empire, Emperor. Then Har Gobind Singh, now the Har Gobind Ji, uh, um, the Guru Har Gobind, he started to arm the Sikh community, the Sikh gurus, and from them the armed conflict started between the Mughal Empire and the Gurus. So if in short, if you ask me why were they killed, I from the reading of history, I would say there was a conflict between the government, the kings, the kingdoms of India and any opposition, whether the opposition was from a religious sect, whether the opposition was from another king, whether the opposition was from another military um, group. At the moment you have an opposition from another group, the government, the kingdom, the king, the ruler of that time would take a serious step and that would even uh, include some sort of oppression, torture and finally execution if you challenge the government of the time. As I said, so this was one guru who was killed and the other guru was Guru Gobind Singh, the ninth guru who was uh, executed and uh, Guru Tej Bahadur was also executed by Aurangzeb at that time and as I said, because the gurus uh, were armed and they were trying to set up a, uh, a Sikh uh, state, uh, a state based on the Sikh religion, uh, Khalistan, which you can call. And later on in the 19th century, be between 1820 onwards, Raja Singh did set up a Sikh um, uh, empire. Uh, that was the first foundation of the Sikh empire. So this was exactly possibility. See, I'm just giving an example. Uh, I'm just giving a speculation, the possibility the Mughal rulers would oppose anybody who would oppose them for a new country, uh, they would oppose them, fight them, go to war with them and maybe even execute them. That seems to be the possibility of uh, doing that. If any ruler has killed any civilian, whether a Muslim civilian, a Hindu civilian or a Sikh civilian, that is absolutely wrong. If any ruler has oppressed the people, that is absolutely wrong. But if any people has opposed the ruler of any time, all I'm saying is any country, even here in Australia, for example, if somebody arms themselves, and uh, goes against the Indian, uh, uh, against the Australian constitution, they would be considered the terrorists and they would be attacked and executed. If in America somebody commits treason, they would be attacked and executed. If somebody commits treason in India, if somebody takes arms against the Indian government, today as well, they would be executed. For example, in 1984, when the, when the Sikh um, uh, leader, who by the name Jarnal, uh, Jarnal Singh, um, Bhindranwala, when he took up arms against the Indian government in 1984, he was also executed along with another 500 to 1000 uh, devotees. So you can see that these, these conflicts were not a religious conflicts, these were political conflicts. So why they happened, 
how they happen as i said much they are much more political in their nature than having any religious affiliation to it as i said aurangzeb had a hindu military general and um, the, the the india's um, uh, one of the famous india's uh, ruler hindu king had a muslim military general uh, the indian um, government in 1984 had a sikh military general who attacked the golden temple to um, uproot the sikh extremist of the time so all of this gives us an idea that if somebody has killed any innocent i repeat that i reiterate that if somebody has killed any innocent whether a hindu whether a sikh or whether a muslim this is oppression and this is wrong and this is prohibited in islam as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in surah maida surah number 5 ayah number 32 if you kill an innocent it is as though you have killed the whole of humanity if you save the life of an innocent it is as though you have saved the whole of humanity that is the islamic principle irrespective of whether the ruler is a muslim a hindu a sikh or a christian the same is blamed on the sikh empire when they ruled Kashmir, it is said that the many Muslims of that area were deprived and discriminated against. So there was an uh, uh, uproar, there was a rebellion against the Sikh empire and finally the Sikh empire fall down. My point here is it is not against Muslims, Sikh or Hindus as a community, as a religious group. But this is a political conflict between people of governance and people who oppose that governance, that rulership, that kingdom, that government. Hope that answers the question.